I am Dr. Renu Thakur from the Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Now, today we will do the first module, Prehistoric Rock Art in India. The present module on prehistoric rock art informs the reader about the creative genius of the early man. The creativity is visible in the paintings and engravings found throughout the world. India has large number of rock art sites. The art motifs painted by the artists were not always the representative of the tangible objects as many drawings are abstract and are difficult to explain. Bhim Petit is the most important rock art site in Madhya Pradesh which has been included in the list of World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. Prehistory is in fact a record of the creative genius of the early man which is reflected from the remains of prehistoric art. In the words of archaeologists, prehistory comprises the period for which no evidence is available from written records. Uh, when such evidence becomes available, we enter the realm of history. In the proto-historic period, the writings are available, but we are not able to read them. Thus, the art remains of prehistoric people survive as records of universal language of drawings and give us information not only on the aesthetic development but also update us on society, religion, material culture, economy, technology, flora and fauna of that time. The creativity is seen in the form of rock paintings and engravings throughout the world. India, Asia Minor, Western Europe, Eastern, Southern and Western Africa stand out as areas which have gone through similar human phases. In spite of the notable variations in industries, we can see they were related. India is immensely rich in these treasures. The rock engravings are more widespread than rock paintings. The paintings are mainly in rock shelters and engravings on the other hand appear on any smooth surface and thus found in the most regions. These are also noticed along with the rock paintings. The engravings or petroglyphs and paintings or pictographs containing sites are located in more than 150 places in India. A. Carlyle was the first to discover rock paintings in Sogagi Ghat near Mirzapur in Uttar Pradesh in 1867-68, 12 years before the sensational discovery of rock paintings in Altamira in Spain by Marcus D. Santula and his daughter Maria in 1880. Carlyle never imparted any information to anyone on the location and nature of these discoveries. V. E. Smith gave account of these discoveries in his article published in the Indian Antiquary in 1906. F. Fawcett was the first to discover rock engravings from Idekal in Kerala. In 1909, A. Silverband published rock paintings found in Mirzapur. In 1910, C. W. Anderson discovered paintings in Singapore in Madhya Pradesh. D. H. Gordon in early 1930s discovered paintings in and around Pachmari and the Mahadeo Hills. 
Since 1947, a number of rock cut shelters have been discovered by scholars. In 1957, V.S. Vakankar discovered rock paintings of Bhim Betak in Raisin district of Madhya Pradesh. He excavated Bhim Betak from 1971 to 1975 in collaboration with N. Mishra. The work of Jagdish Gupta is equally important. He also ex- explored important sites such as Panchmari, such as Pachmari, Adamgarh and Raigarh area. 1960 onwards, S.K. Pandey worked on different sites of Madhya Pradesh and thousands of rock-cut shelters were explored by him. Y. Methpal presented an excellent record of thematic and stylistic analysis of rock art of Bhim Betak using works of earlier scholars. Erwin Neumier in 1983 concentrated on the cultural context of the prehistoric paintings. He made an effort to explain certain features of Indian rock paintings by comparing them to paintings in other parts of the world. Presently, Indira Gandhi Center for the Arts is involved in the study and documentation of rock art. It forms an important component of Adi Drishya program of Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts. The rock art sites are located in different parts of the country. Out of these, the central India is the richest zone. The Vindhyas, the Mahadeo and the Kaimur Hills have 90% of these sites. These rocks are formed of sandstone, which weathers readily to form shelters and caves. These were thickly forested areas and thus ecologically ideal for occupation by food gatherers and hunters of prehistoric times. The painted rock shelters in India are widely distributed from Himalaya to Kerala and from Gujarat to Assam. The entire area has been grouped into different regions. The states of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh form part of Northern India. The rock art of Ladakh Jammu and Kashmir is exclusively petroglyphic while that of Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh is pictographic and is a continuation of the Vindhyan tradition the eastern region encompasses states of Bihar Jharkhand West Bengal and Odisha the pictographs are more common in the rock art of Jharkhand and Odisha the rock art of Bihar is an extension of Madhya Pradesh and is exclusively pictographic In the northeastern region Tripura and Assam have a few documented rock art sites In the western region many sites have been documented by Indira Gandhi National Center of Arts in Gujarat Rajasthan and Maharashtra In Dakkan some rock sites have been noticed in Chittor and Raichur districts some rock engravings petroglyphs have been reported from Kapgalu in Belleri district and Iddakal cave in Vainad district The states of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala have also yielded rock paintings and engravings. The physiography of this area is different from that of central India and rocks are of granite. The richness of the central zone is not visible here. The earlier phase or upper paleolithic and mesolithic is missing in south India. Possibly the paintings came with the advent of neolithic period or new stone age 
Usually the shelters rich in paintings are located on ground higher than the surrounding surface area. Several superimposition of figures are noticed in the shelters as generations after generations of homo sapiens moved in and out of these shelters and every time the paintings seemed to be a little advanced. The natural environment was enough for the early man who was an artist to transform and translate these rocks and caverns into art galleries. The present module is specifically structured on the prehistoric rock art, thus we will restrict ourselves only to prehistoric paintings. No doubt the drawings, paintings as well as engravings developed during Upper Paleolithic period developed during Upper Paleolithic period, the aesthetic sense, however, developed in Lower Paleolithic age. At the end of Mesolithic period, the early man enriched paintings with number of new elements which kept multiplying thereafter. Now we will classify the paintings. The paintings have been classified into different groups on the basis of drawings, colors used and scenes portrayed. Y. Mathpal classified painting of Bhim Betak into two main groups. The first group depicts scenes related to hunters and food gatherers and the second group exhibits the fighters riding on horses and elephants using metal weapons. The prehistoric paintings of first group are further divided into five phases. Bhim Betak extends over seven hills namely Vinayak, Bhonaravali, Bhim Betak Hills, Lakhajor West, Jondara, Muni Baba Ki Pahadi. The first phase shows paintings of large animals such as wild buffalo, leopard, cow and elephant. These are large and mainly painted in white, red, dark crimson, purple in color. In the second phase, both humans and animals have been painted. The hunters with bows and arrows, spears, traps and empty handed shown chasing animals. The men and women both shown participating in the hunting. Mostly deer and wild buffalo are seen in this phase. The color used mainly is light red along with crimson, purple, green, vermilion and yellow. In some cases other colors like scarlet, Sienna extra have also been used. The third phase shows large sized large sized human and animal figures drawn mainly in natural poses in white color but other colors such as red, orange, dark purple have also been used. The fourth phase shows the living figures of both human and animals. The color used mainly are white, light red, dark red burnt umber, crimson and separa. In the fifth phase, buffaloes are shown having extended horns and bodies decorated in honeycomb, zigzag and concentric square platforms, mainly in creamy white with other colors such as burnt umber, burnt siyama, sepia, crimson and black.
the earliest figures are painted in red in other regions too. Baneri Hills in Rajasthan on the eastern bank of Sota revealed animal, human and bird figures in red color. Darsang in Panchmahal district Gujarat explored by VH Sunavane also reveals paintings in monochrome red color. Several groups of paintings depicting animals, humans, floral and geometrical designs have been seen in addition to some miscellaneous figures. The animal mainly represented are deer and rhinoceros, with hunters which are similar to the paintings found at Bhimbete. There are possibilities of having more caves in the area which can help us establish reliable chronology for the paintings. The prehistoric paintings provide us and important information about the socio-cultural life of those times. In Jora, a body of bull is painted in two pigments, red and green. In Lakhajor, green colored pictures of dancers indicating positioning of legs is seen. The dancers are mainly shown wearing a lion cloth. They are shown with kidney shaped heads with a small circle in front of the mouth. The small circle is possibly a symbol of singing. The musical instruments are also noticed in some of the paintings. The dancers are shown with headdress and ornaments. The female figures are painted in different ways. They are shown with braids, trapping rats, tortoise and fish. One can see them collecting vegetables. Men are also shown collecting fruits in the baskets. A depiction of a family in a painting is another attraction. A pregnant woman, two aged women, one man and three boys are shown as a family. Very few figures show sexual activity. The composite figures of animals having human body and a snout of a boar similar to rhinoceros under lip of an elephant and horns of a bovine are very important. The women grinding on kerns are visible which indicate grinding and processing of food. The most important information from the painting is portrayal of various weapons fixed with microliths. This information mainly comes from the rock painting. However, we are yet to recover such weapons. The arrows fixed with pointed tips are most commonly seen. The weapons are of varied size and form. This shows that greater part of their food was obtained from animals. The hunt was main activity pursued by men where food gathering seems to be solely done by women. Some repetitive scenes may signify deeper meaning. The massive animal figurines such as boar on the rocks, a scene of a bull with an elephantine snout and a crab running ahead of human have also been noticed. These scenes have been interpreted as the scenes of tribal war represented by the animal totems of different tribes. The scene of child buried from Bimpetak shows parents mourning. The artists have tried to represent humans Birds, animals, but lakes, rivers and trees are rarely seen. The agricultural implements, pottery, 
an image of structure is not visible the snake is rarely painted by the prehistoric painters the emotions are appropriately depicted in the painting the artistic ability of the painter reached at climax when they started painting x-ray figures in which internal organs are visible technique in the painting seems similar everywhere the figures were drawn on bare rock without any preparation of ground or color of the background in some cases the rock surface was scratched with the tool to discover the outline of a previous drawing the scholars divided the techniques into eight different forms such as isolated framed analytical naturalistic abstract and dynamic Metz Pal refers to 12 styles of paintings. The animals are shown both in profile and in motion. The human figures are painted in front or rear poses and sometimes in three-fourth profile as well. No horizontal or ground lines are visible in the paintings. The figures are nowhere shown with shadows. The figures are shown without eyes, nostrils and other minute details. However, the figures look complete and independent. It seems that the art motifs are not always necessarily representative of tangible objects. Sometimes they convey more or less abstract ideas. In some cases the artist took liberty and distorted figures as well. The rock shelters and caves provide important information about colors used by the painters. Painting was both monochrome and polychrome. Methpal refers to use of mainly 16 colors in the drawings. The main colors used are white and light red. Blue was never used. Yellow, purple, black, mauve and green were used. All colors used were derived from minerals. These were diluted with water or animal fat before use. The red color was readily available from hematite that is ferric oxide. yellow from limonite a hydrate iron oxide purple from magnesium mauve from oxide of manganese black from charred bones or charcoal white from limestone and green from gluconite the natural pigments were grounded into the fine powder and then used by the early man the only used primary colors and not mixed ones background color was not used and figures were usually drawn on bare rock No doubt color has an important role in the classification of paintings but one should be very careful because a particular color was not confined to a particular area or time period the red color is not associated with earlier paintings only but later painting also and in some cases red color mixed with white or cream was preferred thus the painting should not be classified on the basis of colors alone They used fine and soft brushes made up of animal hair to paint these figures. There are divergent views on the purpose of these paintings. It is debated whether the cult of souls or ancestors and forces of nature was primordial. The human figure holding something like trident of ship upside down appears in some paintings. It is difficult to accept this figure as figure of Lord Shiva. The art historians should not try to overemphasize the religious and ritual content of these pictures. No doubt religion is a creative force behind artistic activity, but other aspects of everyday life also seem to have influenced art activities. In depth study of these treasures can help us know about the dead past 
that still lives in caverns and on boulders. Now we will discuss about the conservation of rock art. The conservation of rock art remains have multiple problems. The process of natural weathering of the rocks, especially in sandstone zones, lead to adverse factors which affect paintings. The presence of cracks and fissures damage the painting due to percolation of water inside creating moist conditions. However, following measures can help conserve these wonderful paintings for posterity. First, documentation. Second, developing methodology of conservation. And third, environmental preservation. The Archaeological Survey of India and Department of Anthropology should serve as nodal agencies to conserve them. The universities, colleges and state departments of archaeology can be sensitized to conserve them. Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts is doing commendable job to sensitize larger population by putting up rock cut exhibitions in different parts of the country. Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts in collaboration with France is working towards conserving rock arts since 1993. Hope we can conserve them for posterity for our future generations.